Why don't you stand up and join us? If you join online, welcome to Tree of Life in Pflugerville, Texas. It's Resurrection Sunday. He's alive. He's the reason that we have life, that we have breath. Let's just begin to acknowledge his presence this morning. He's here. Come on, just open up your gates. Release your thanksgiving. We have something to be thankful for this morning. Come on, just begin to tell him how much you love him. Lord, we're so thankful for what you did at the cross.
claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on a cross they made for sinners. For every curse his blood and kill him. One final breath and it was finished. But not the end we could have known. For the earth began to shake. And the veil was torn. What sacrifice was made as the head of him
throughout this life and with the promise of eternity with you forever in heaven, God. We pray that the families that are represented here today lead changed, changed by your redemptive love and that they walk in the freedom that your sacrifice purchased. We thank you, God, that this example is going to draw others to you by your spirit, Father. We love you and we honor you today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Carla. I do want to welcome everyone here to our Resurrection Sunday service, everyone online, uh, and of course, everyone here in person. It's really good to see you guys, as well as some of the extended members of your family that are represented. If this is your first time visiting us, we do ask that it not be your last but also that you would uh, look at your bulletin that you were handed out uh, at the door. There's gonna be a little connection card there. Please fill that out. It just allows us to send you a note. Um, in the words of Pastor Cheryl, it allows us to send you a letter. Uh, just to thank you for being here. <laughs> just to thank you for being here. Uh, and then it helps to keep us um, just in contact with you as church happenings begin. Um, also, and make sure to put that in the offering bucket uh, when it comes by if you are here uh, in person. I do have a scripture that I wanted to read uh, with you guys. This is Job 19.25, and it says, But as for me, I know that the one who bought me and made me free from sin lives, and that he will stand upon the earth in the end. And I think what I love the most about that is the very beginning um, sometimes, you know, when we speak with confidence about something, we're speaking from a personal uh, perspective. So we say, but as for me. So in other words, when I read this, I thought, well, is it also saying, I don't know about y'all, but as for me, I know that the one who bought me and made me free from sin lives and that he will stand upon the earth in the end. And so um, that is from the book of Job. And a lot of you know the story of Job and the hardships that he endured, financial ruin, uh, excruciating physical pain, loss of his children, and even the inability to rely on the encouragement of his own spouse at a pretty tough time. But through all of that, his confidence and the salvation that the Lord offers never wavered. And so that's our prayer for you today that you leave here bold uh, in your confidence of who Jesus is, of the price that he paid to free you, and the fact that he does indeed live. Amen. Uh, we have a couple of announcements that we want to go over. We are happy to report that Pastor Cheryl will be back this week. Um, please keep her in your prayers as she Amen. travels back, um, and also keep her in your prayers for supernatural strength. She's not going to be here long before turning right back around and traveling to the Philippines. So please keep her and her family in your prayers as she begins um, this busy season. Uh, we do have a couple of things going on that you may want to put on your calendar. We have uh, the authority of the believer. It is an eight-week Bible study that's going to um, begin, let's see, April the 3rd. We have Wednesdays at 7 p.m. So for those of you who are able to make it out, we'd love to have you join us. We also have prayer meeting that takes place this Thursday, April the 4th, 6 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Um, and this is just kind of a side note. We also pray in the prayer room on Sunday mornings at 9.15 upstairs. So if you ever want to join us for that, you're certainly welcome. We have a men's breakfast coming up. We know that men love to eat. So we have a men's <laughs> breakfast coming up for you guys to get together in fellowship. Um, if you'd like some more information about that, please contact Luke Hatley. He's the donut and coffee guy that's out there. Um, so he'll certainly be sure to give you some information about that. Again, that's Saturday the 6th, 8 o'clock here in the sanctuary. And then last but not least, we do have an opportunity for you to partner with us in the missions trip that's coming up to the Philippines. You have an opportunity to help donate um, some flip-flops to some children. So it's only two bucks. I said this last week. I have spent $2 on some crazy things that I put into my cart at the Dollar Tree, okay? So if you're like me, you can find $2 to help partner with us in that wonderful ministry. Um, you can also donate online, or you can write that on your offering envelope. Just make sure to designate that that is for the Flip Flop Fund. Um, at this time, we're going to have the ushers help us by handing out the offering envelopes. And then we're going to welcome Pastor up to do the offering itself. 
Am I on here? I know I'm in dangerous territory here. I'm in Texas and limping. And most Texans will shoot things that limp. So just keep your guns in your purse and your guns in your pocket because I'm going to heal, heal through this. Amen? Now I'm getting better. I'm getting diagnosed. And, uh, and, and so, I, again, I'm going I'm to tell into this thing. It's going to be all better for me. They've got kind of a disc problem. with The x-ray was done this week in the very lower back, uh, pinching my sciatic nerve a bit. And so uh, it's uh, something that's going to be taken care of with God and God and man working together here. So just keep on praying about that because I am <clears throat> not staying home in the Philippines. We're going to be leaving here a week from uh, Monday. And like she said, Cheryl comes home Thursday. Cheryl's been in contact. She's had a great time with the family. I'm going to say hello to Cheryl. She's probably watching right now live. They're seven hours ahead of us in South Africa. And they're, her and the family will be watching live with us. So God bless you, Cheryl and family, as they had that... Uh, Memorial service for her brother-in-law named Robert Gray. Hope you guys have had a good week so far. And uh, when I have these uh, Resurrection Sundays that take place once a year like this, I always remember about how grateful I am, not just that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again, but while he was on the cross, he had the greatest temptation of his life. For we know the Bible says very clearly, he said, if I want to, although man has treat, treated me totally unjustly, and I'm dying an innocent death here, I could call forth legions of angels right now and just wipe out the entire human race at one word, one command in my mouth. But praise God that Jesus Christ said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And then the Bible also says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Now, what is that joy? Just look at your left, look at your right. The people around you that are born again believers in Jesus Christ are called the joint heirs with Jesus. They're called the bride of Christ. Amen. They're called sons and daughters of the Most High God. They're called the apple of God's eye. They're called the redeemed of the Lord. They're called blessed. They're called those who God loves so much that he sent his only begotten son for you and I. Those who call upon his name shall be saved. Aren't you grateful for that? Yeah. Please give God a hand clap of praise and thank you for salvation. Thank you, Jesus. And what God is after for us today now, the Bible says that God wants us to be workers now in his vineyard. He says, occupy until he comes back the second time. So I, I hope and pray that all you folks that are here that are believers will find your giftings, find your callings in life. God's got a purpose for every one of you. He wants to fulfill that purpose in you and through you. Because how many folks realize there's still a lot of people around us in the Austin Metroplex that do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And you're God's mouthpiece, you're God's ambassador. God's got you here for such a time as this. There is an anointing on your life to share Jesus Christ for those around us. So praise God that Jesus Christ has risen. Um, we have birthdays here. I'm not getting, I'm not getting involved. I have time this morning to do all the scriptures for these birthday people. But I will either call you on the phone or get to it next week. But it is a birthday week for Mark St. Clair. Is Mark St. Clair here today? Would you raise your hand? Just Mark over here. Let's give him a hand. God bless you, Mark. We bring us to this week. Good to see you. There's also Jose Pastrano's birthday this week. Is Jose over here somewhere? Well, God bless Jose. Tell him we, we bless him in Jesus' name. And then we also have John Strother. This is uh, Megan's husband. This sings on the platform up here. Birthday happening this week. And then we also have Daisy Garcia. Is she here in the congregation? Daisy Garcia. And did I, did I miss any birthday? This is Daisy over here. Well, God bless you. And uh, is this your birthday today? Oh, this is Anjuman lady here. We appreciate Ida. And I'm not sure, again, your name was not on my little list here, but it will be. And I'll call you guys up this week as well. We've got scriptures for you guys, and I get the time to get the prayer going. Because I, like I tell these folks, and I pray about these folks, and God gives me scriptures for them. It's not just a little bam, bam, bam thing. It sometimes takes me up to two hours uh, to, before God's giving me the clear clarity of scriptures that he's promising for people for the new year. I take that seriously there because God's got a promise for you that's supposed to encourage you, energize you, and let you realize what path in a little way that God's got for you for the year ahead. Did I miss any other birthday, folks? Having a birthday today? This week, how about anybody having an anniversary this week? Anybody at all? What a popular week for anniversary for anniversaries? People getting married. Well, God bless these folks that are having birthdays, anniversaries. Love our ushers come to the front. Have you guys already handed out your offering envelopes? You already done that? For us with Damien's help. Appreciate Damien. All of our ushers, all of our readers and helpers here. God bless our worship team. Thank you guys for leading us faithfully in praise and worship today and every week as well. Let's pray blessings right now upon all these birthday folks and upon this offering as well. And just ask God to bless our city as God wants us to also. So, Father, 
We do give praise and thanks today for those that are having birthdays this week and today. We speak God blessings on them. We say lead them, guide them, direct them, O oh God, by your spirit. May the plan you have for them, Lord, come to pass. May they hear your voice ever clearer. May they bear lasting fruit, receive divine protection, divine provision. And we praise you, God, that your grace is sufficient for them, whatever they face in the year ahead. We bless what is sown today, O oh God, this offering may be used for your glory. We say the city of Austin, God, is blessed. There's coming forth commerce, inventions, business, ideas, and creativity. And from that's coming bonuses and raises to these people. And as they're being blessed, O oh God, they're going to bless others more and more. Because we're not greedy. We're those, God, we see ourselves as a, a conduit of blessing. What you give us in surplus, we don't want to give out much of that to the world around us who needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the city around us as well, help us be a blessing to those in need. We pray, God, rebuke the devourer for thy name's sake in our behalf. We command debt, God, to be broken off your people. And we thank you, Lord, all of us say we are wise stewards of what God gives us. We ask and praise you, God, for all these things in Jesus' name. You can give online as well. You can help them to serve the congregation. Those that are watching, if you can give online. And uh, that's also a way to give. And I'm going to move on here. We're having one more video about the Easter story. Matthew 27, verses 33 through 37. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head was placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining and the curtains of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed. Luke 23, verses 50 through 53. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God, going to Pilate. He asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices that they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of our Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He 
has risen. Place 
Father, we just are so grateful again today for your people that are here today. For the blood of Jesus Christ has covered the doorposts of their hearts. We thank you, Lord, for the salvation that's been brought to us by Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that because you live, we live. And, Father God, the life we live is a life of abundance in all dimensions. We praise you, God, for the needs being met for your people. I thank you for families and friends and grandchildren, and Father, and all the neighbors around us as well. May you touch those, of oh God, that are in their homes today. Who right now live in a spiritual darkness. May you draw them unto Christ, O God, this year. May there come forth a revival upon your people. May there come forth, God, a fresh move of the Spirit upon the body of Christ. Raise up prayer warriors. Raise up intercessors. Because we know that your word is true. That says, if my people, if my people called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. And I will, I will take the sin from them, and I will heal their land, saith the Lord. Let, the, oh God, let that scripture come to pass. Let it, God, not be a myth. Let it, God, be breathed on in this hour, this season, by your spirit. May us commit this time, O oh God, to you. And thank you, Lord, for the precious blood of Jesus and the precious resurrection that came after that. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated here today. I'm going to speak for a moment on uh, Jesus being the risen king. We want to welcome all you that have come here today. I want to say, first of all, thank you also to all the volunteers who bought in decorations. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, my daughter, Kristen, for all the hard work you guys have behind the scenes and all the volunteers and workers with them. I want to say thank you to Jack and the worship, the outreach team. We had some good things happen yesterday, and uh, we'll just be able to hear some more about that. You can share that perhaps even next time we come together because uh, they, they went on the streets there, and I'm sure you probably saw some of the people 
out there will actually do, do not take it. They don't reject prayer. They really want to be prayed for. And so I encourage you guys, be those people that are open to pray for people right there in grocery stores or at your workplace in a, in a discreet type way. Because people really do, most folks do believe in God. They believe God is still answering prayer. Amen. But we just need to pray for them. Amen. And those that are here now that are here for the first time or just kind of visit once in a while at a church, we want to welcome you back again. If you don't have, don't have a church home, you can check us out. Come back and kick the tires and see if it might be a good fit for you as well. Uh, our church is called Tree of Life because when I first began pastoring here 21 years ago now, it's been a very, very quick 21 years, it was called Family Faith Center. And I was in a trip in China about a year or two into this, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me while one of the guys was preaching at the underground church. And the Spirit of God said, change your name to Tree of Life Church because your vision will be like a tree. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cause folks to come in this place and come alive. Because a tree's on a tree until the seed germinates and breaks open and punches through the dirt and starts coming alive. Amen. So in this place, you're going to find we're going to create an atmosphere here every single service that you might come alive in the spirit. Amen. You're going to find that we're a church that still believes in the Holy Spirit. We had healing take place last week. And most weeks, God's healing somebody. And how many folks can just raise your hand and say, God touched you last week and did something in your bodies. So many of you folks got touched and you, folks who were praying for it, that prayer is still being answered. Healing is taking place in you. Because the Bible says healing is a children's bread. We still believe there's still prophetic ministry. Uh, we're not a non-profit corporation, even though we really are. But we still believe prophets exist. And we don't uh, live here and thrive on prophecy. But we still let that uh, gift flow among us. Words of knowledge, words of wisdom, gifts of faith, discerning of spirits. All those things are still in operation because we need them. We need the supernatural. Amen. Amen. Because all of us can put on a we all can put on a facade, we can all smile real big, and we all can say the right things in, in Christian ease. But deep down there's sometimes things that are even going on we don't even know about ourselves that the Holy Spirit knows about. Amen. And he wants to bring those to the surface to not hurt you but to bless you and set you free. Amen. I'm being set free of things on, on an ongoing basis, and so is uh, you and Amen. I, because the Bible says we, we possess the land little by little once we get saved. And that's what God told the Israelites. You'll possess the land from your enemies little by little, and God does bring breakthroughs as well. Next thing a tree does, the tree becomes rooted and grounded because there's, there's storms coming, there's high winds coming, there's winters coming, there's freezes coming. And the better the root system is, the more that uh, plant will thrive when springtime finally comes. How many of us do realize spring does come? Amen. But sometimes there's going to be sorrow, there's going to be valleys, there's going to be winters. There's going to be storms that test you. So the deeper your roots go down in Jesus, the more grounded you are by faith and not by emotions and by feelings and by circumstances, the longer you're going to find yourself bearing what God calls lasting fruit and growing in the things of God. The Bible says the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter. Not dimmer and dimmer, amen. We go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. That's what God wants for believers. You never stop growing in Jesus. Amen. I'm still learning new things. I'm still growing in anointing. I'm still growing in revelation, understanding. I still have a whole lot more to learn and to become until the last breath I take on this earth. Then the last thing about a tree is it bears fruit after its own kind. Some of you folks here are apple trees. Some of you guys are orange trees. Some of you guys bear pears. And so you're not all the same as far as your giftings and callings go. We want to find out what your giftings and callings are. Encourage that. Train that. Sharpen that. And let you get released in that gifting and that calling. Amen. You guys need more than just the pastor teacher. You need to have evangelists. You need to have apostles. You need to have the prophets. We need to have other teachers to come in here. And so we bring in guest speakers. We bring in other folks. We also encourage you guys to read, watch, listen to Christian radio, TV, and so forth, and Christian music. And also come to classes here on Wednesday nights. We have all kind of teachings like the one this week here on the authority of the believer. All very good. It'll help you grow because the Bible says iron sharpens iron. And the Great Commission says what? Go into all the world, preach the gospel, and make, not converts, it's disciples right. Right. of all people groups on the earth. God wants disciples. Amen. And disciples mean there means a person like Jesus, like the teacher, like the mentor they've had. So I'm going to get this ball, this message here. Jesus is the risen King. Let's look at Romans chapter eight, verse 11, new living translation. It says the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead also lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, 
He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living in you. Easter was ever meant to be a holiday and it was celebrated for 2,000 years ago only that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. It's also a time to remember that we have the resurrection power of Jesus Christ now living in us. That means anything dead in your life, your family, your circumstances, God can resurrect by his spirit because his resurrection power is now dwelling inside your mortal body. In fact, the Bible even says we minister death to death and life to life by the spirit of God that lives inside of us. I've seen people so anointed by God, they can walk into the place they work at and folks start coming under conviction that they need a savior. They start asking that person questions. What is different about you? What do you have in you that you're smiling? There's a glow about you. There's a peace on you that I don't seem to have myself. The answer always is, I serve the Prince of Peace and his spirit lives inside of me and what I have, you can have too. And the main thing is you'll have eternal life and be with God forever and ever more, even from that. Today, to recognize every part of our lives, you'll be touched by God. The resurrection king also can resurrect me. The catch is, Jesus must not just become your savior, he must become your king and your Lord. I'm gonna spend this entire message here about how the kingdom of God, the King Jesus, is what we really need to embrace in this hour and in this season. God will transform our lives, and praise God that God did that, but the main reason that Jesus Christ got killed and died on the cross and they yelled out, crucify him, was because he declared, I am a king. In fact, when Jesus Christ was born, when King Herod of Israel heard that there was a, there was a child born in Bethlehem, who's gonna become the king of Israel, what did Herod do? Put a decree out to kill every boy under two years of age in Israel. You see, it's him calling himself not Lord, not savior, but king that got him killed. And that's what also will bring you to your life, your destination is when Jesus becomes not just your savior, but becomes your king and your Lord. We're gonna explain that more and more in this message. Matthew chapter 27, verse 11, it says, now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him and said, are you the king of the Jews? Now notice that many times when these guys are talking to Christ before he went to the cross, it says he did not say a word. He wouldn't even answer him back. This guy asked the right question. He said, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus opens his mouth this time and he says, it is as you say. He finally asked the right question. I am the king of Israel. And praise God he is that even today, not just Israel, but the entire earth and universe. Amen. Amen. After he said this, he took him to a place that's kind of like the locker room of the soldiers. In that place, they put a crown of thorns on his head. There was great big, thick, long thorns they find in Israel that are probably about five to six inches long. They would pierce mm. your skin and blood go down your face. They plucked out the hair, the beard on his face, plucked that out where blood would come out of that as well. They took their fists and they beat him on every part of his body, his face, his chest, his kidneys, his back, his stomach. They kicked him, they spit upon him, they mocked him, they bowed before him and said, Hail, King of the Jews, laughed in his face. And all they could do was Satan's help to rile him up so mad and so angry, they hoped, Satan hoped, he'd utter those words, Father, come destroy them. Send your angels and wipe out the whole bunch. They just aren't worth it. But praise God, Jesus Christ saw beyond what man, evil man, could do to him. And he endured the scourging, the shame, the beatings and pain and so forth. You've all probably seen graphic details of movies of what Jesus Christ also suffered on the cross and carrying the cross and the nails and the heaving himself up and down and could not hardly breathe and all the open wounds and all those things you've all heard about. And they're far worse than you think. But the worst thing about all of that was, was when God gave me a revelation, I was filled with the Holy Spirit at age 20 in 1978. And he showed me a little bit of the pain that God the Father The Father loved Jesus more than you can even fathom because the Bible says God is love. And he had Jesus with him from the foundations of the earth. And you can imagine your own baby, your own three-year-old, five-year-old child being tortured in front of your face. What that make you feel like? And what you would feel like, God had a hundred times greater 
than that, than that. Because God's got a capacity of love that we've got to understand and got to embrace. And I'm, I'm sorry I'm being emotional, but the Holy Spirit, when I start speaking like this, the Holy Spirit just comes on me. <laughs> because, because again, even the Holy Spirit was there. The Holy Spirit is a third part of the Trinity, and the Holy Spirit was right there with God also. And the Holy Spirit kind of fulfills the uh, the female part of the God, if you would. There's no male or female in heaven, we know that, but the function of the Holy Spirit is a comforter, a guider, a, a counselor, one that lives in us and comforts us, so forth, so on. All the things a mother does is what the Holy Spirit does. And the Holy Spirit and God had to watch the one they loved from the foundations of the universe be tortured unjustly and still not raise one hand to destroy a human race from doing it. I don't know how God did that, but God somehow did do that. And that revelation I received in 1978 is why I'm behind a pulpit today. Because when I had that revelation, the, the fire of God came in my bedroom and burned all the dross and all the chaff out of my life. I realized how selfish I was. I was living my kingdom come, my will be done on this earth as is done in heaven. I said, God, I'll make my own plan. I'll be a CPA and buy the right furniture, the right house, the right car, right wife, right whatever. And God said, all that is filthy rags. It's not my plan for your life. You're not, a, you're, not a, you're not an accountant, you're not a CPA, and you got to start seeking first my kingdom and my righteousness. you got to start dying to yourself. Yes. Let your flesh die like my son's flesh died. Because if a seed does not die and get buried in the ground, it abides alone and bears no fruit. And so I did that in my room, and the fire of God filled that room up, and I had liquid love just hit my whole entire being. And for the first time in my five-year job at a grocery store, been there for three years, people started coming to me in private. What do you have? And people were getting saved left, right, and center without me witnessing, handing out tracks or wearing a bumper sticker on the back of my car or a cross around my neck. People started getting saved. Some folks began to call me names, only a couple, but most of them were coming and people were, were receiving Christ as Savior. And some remained numb and dormant and did nothing. But I realized we need the presence of God in our lives more than anything else. Because the Bible says no man comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws him. If the Spirit of God controls your life and consumes your life, it will start drawing people to you automatically. That's why he says, seek first my kingdom, my righteousness, and all these things get added to you as well. So nothing makes me get more emotional than talking about the suffering that Christ went through. Because I've seen uh, my own daughter almost die on, in a hospital. I know what we went through with that. And it was a hundred times worse for God the Father. Than anything I ever experienced at my own daughter almost dying in an operating room in a hospital. And so I thank him every day and I praise him every day for the blood of Jesus and the salvation in my life. Okay, I'm going to move on here. After they took him up and they beat him up and so forth, knelt before him and mocked him as king of Israel. We now honor Jesus when we serve him as savior and as king in our lives. We love to have the escape of the fiery pit, amen. We love God to heal us and provide our needs for us and take care of all the fleshly things around us. Praise God that God does that. God loves doing that. God will always do that for us because we are his children and he loves us, amen. But also God is telling us he's also not just a God of savior blessings that helps our flesh out and our soul out. He also is a God of government and a God of boundaries. Every kingdom has got boundaries. It's got laws and rules, regulations, and has got things that she helps to preserve our lives, protect our lives, and make our lives better. So on the cross, they put above Jesus Christ's head a plaque. And the plaque says, Jesus Christ, King of the Jews. Well, the uh, religious leading class of that day got very angry when they saw that. They said, get that down and reword that to say he claimed to be the King of the Jews. But Pilate comes out and says, I said and I wrote what I wrote. And it will not change. And praise God, here's Jesus Christ on Golgotha's hill, overlooking Jerusalem, the place he will come back to in a few years probably, and, and see himself as king of kings and lord of lords over the entire world. Men will bow down to him, not as a suffering savior, but as a conquering king, the lion of Judah, the king over all, the lord of all creation. 
crowned with many crowns and Lord forevermore. Amen. You see, Satan did his best and did the very, very best he could do to humiliate him, embarrass him, pain him, and say, even look at Jerusalem. You call yourself the king of this place? Look where you're at. Stare at it while you die upon this cross. But Jesus Christ had a joy set before him, like I said before. He endured that cross. God's grace was on him. And praise God, because he died and he was sinless, God said, I now, I now accept that sacrifice. For all who call upon the name of my son, Jesus Christ, they shall be saved. And that's a big thing. Because if you had sinned or had not gone through that cross, you would not be here today. Amen. Celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ the Lord. On the cross, this took place. The good news is that on the third day, the Bible says this is today, he rose from the dead. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Let's read this. Now I saw heaven opened. Behold, a white horse, and he who sat on that white horse was called Faithful and True. In righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written there that nobody knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Praise God, you Texans. will have your own horse in heaven <laughs> following Jesus. It'll be better than Lone Rangers. Amen. And now out of this, his mouth goes a sharp sword. And with it, he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule with them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. And that's how he comes back as our, as our groom, as our Savior, our Lord, with us forevermore in strength, might, and power. The Bible says everybody that sees him will bow before him and declare he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. <laughs> This is the theology side of Christ's crucifixion, resurrection. But the question this morning is, is he your king? You that are watching online, you need to ask yourselves, is Jesus, is God, are they your king? It's hard to understand kingdom and kingship as Americans sometimes because we don't live in a kingdom in this country. We live in a thing that's called democracy. In democracy, we the people are the first words of our constitution, of our, of our preamble for our nation. We the people. So we're a, we're a nation run by we the people. And your opinions, your vote matter in this country. And you're also a self-ruled people in a democracy is like that. Now this is probably a good thing to have in a place where there's unbelievers and believer, believers living together in the same place. The only problem comes when the unbelievers outnumber the believers in a democracy, you're in trouble. How many see right now the balance is tipping? And there's people dropping out of our churches by the thousands. And their church is closing down. And there's many of our folks that are under 30 years of age that won't darken church, churches across our nation and uh, don't know Jesus Christ. And there's got, there's got to come revival. There's got to come a harvest in this nation these last days and last hour. Because you can pray all you want for the right politician to try and save our country. It's just not going to work that way. It's going to come by a heart change among politicians and among leaders and rulers and systems in our country. And that's why God doesn't say to pray for the right leaders. It says, pray that my people called by my name humble themselves. They pray, they turn from their wicked ways, and I will come and I will heal their land. We've seen in times past that God can bring massive revival to nations quickly and fast by those who pray the price and believe God for that. And so my prayers even this year are going to be steeped up more and more about harvest for our country. Prodigal sons coming back into God's kingdom once again. Those that are, that are wavering out there that are at one time in love with God, on fire for God. But the, the, frick, the uh, flame has gone down to a smoldering wick. And God wants to re rekindle that flame and blow on you once again as far as that wick goes and bring that flame back. And put oil back in your lamp to overflowing. Amen. Be like the wise virgins who filled those lamps up before Christ came back. When the bridegroom came, they were ready. They were full of the oil of the Holy Spirit. The Bible is not written in a democratic mindset. It begins with these words. In the beginning was God. That's theocracy. That's where God rules the country. 
And if God has his, has his way, he'll rule a nation. Now, the best case scenario was found back in the Old Testament where a person like David, a man after God's own heart, listened to God every day, heard God's voice, and ruled the country in a righteous way, following the Bible and the Word of God to do that. When we start kicking out the Word of God out of our schools, out of our uh, judge, uh, judgment places, courts, government, so forth, we are in big trouble. Because what takes place is man's brain starts ruling the country. Amen. How many folks know that's dangerous? Amen. Because man's brain can't even figure out what a woman is. That's where our brain's going. A Supreme Court justice can't even tell you what a woman is. Supreme Court justice. So I'm telling you we're going backwards, not forward in our brain. We're dumbing down, not smarting up. Amen. In the realms of the spirit especially. And so it's why it's important we take the, the lead ourselves as grandparents and parents and try to pour the word of God in our children. Try and disciple them. Let them know about the Ten Commandments, about salvation, about Amen. Hebrews chapter 6, foundational principles of Christianity. What's it mean about heaven, hell, eternal judgment? What's the gifts of the Spirit? How to get baptized in the Holy Spirit? What's salvation all about? What are angels? All our kids should learn things like this. And it becomes normal to praise and worship God in your house. Normal. Instead of twerking and, and listening to hip-hop and so forth in the living room, let's get involved in some uh, hill song. Amen. It's some praise and worship music. They lift their hands to God instead of the other part of their bodies. Amen. Just seeing too much of that junk. It's hard to understand kingship and kingdom because sometimes we're culture. But again, we don't belong to this culture. Only we belong to the kingdom of God. We got to get ourselves conformed into his culture more than our culture. Amen. This culture may go backwards more and more, but it does not mean we got to go backwards. We are in this world, not of this world. We are aliens in this world right now. Amen. And we're here as salt and light to minister death to death, life to life, as long as we're here. This is good for, good for a people again that are mixed. So the Bible is not written in this mindset of being a democracy. When you make Jesus Christ your king, he does not make you one of his subjects. He makes you one of his blessed ones. He doesn't want to be your king to rule you and dominate over you and try to make you like a puppet. He wants to free you up to be what you were made to be. He's come to give you life, the Bible says, and life more abundant than anything you or the world can give to you. You can't make up your best existence on this earth. You can't do that. Only God can do that. You know what God does? When God is the ruler of your life, I've seen it in my own life as well. My sister is here, Dana, and husband Gary from Florida. God bless you for being here. She can testify that... When I made Jesus Christ Lord of my life, he began putting me in the right place at the right time to get where I'm at today. I didn't make any doors open up to be in pastorate, to be in ministry, to do rock seminars. I found myself in front of crowds of sometimes 2,000 people at age 21. And uh, I didn't make those doors open up. I made it the phone would ring. I'd answer it. Can you come here? I'm coming. If I had time, I'd be there. I didn't care if it was 10, 50, 500, or 2,000. I was there. And the uh, same thing took, took place in this church. I didn't try to make this church my own church. They called me up, invited me in, and here I am. And I'll go when it's time to go. But I'm telling you folks that if God is leader of your life, rules your life, he will make things happen by divine coincidence that you cannot make happen yourself. He'll put you in the right place at the right time and give you favor in that place. You'll be like Joseph. You may be in the prison for a while, but you will get out there as second in command in due time. Amen? If you're in God's will. God is here to bless you, not to curse you. And it does not mean life will be easy all the time as a Christian. Because there will be testings. There will be trying. There will be refinings. Because God wants character more than just gifting in your life. Amen? How many folks have seen some gifted people that are rotten behind the scenes? Because the character is not controlling, not overriding the gifting. God wants a balance in your life of gifting and character coming together that you might exemplify the true Jesus and not the false Messiah. Amen. Because there's too much of that going on with man's flesh. Moving on here. We need to crown him as Lord of all. When Queen Elizabeth died and Prince Charles became king automatically by name, he was not really able to rule or govern until what? Until the coronation where he received the crown on his head. He was king in name only, but he became really king to have real bite and real rulership when the crown went on his head and coronation took place. 
Many of us have, have called Jesus Lord or Savior by our mouths, but do we really crown him as king of our lives and coronate him and say, you now have control of my life. I put my trust in you. That's what God, God wants. The resurrection of power of Jesus Christ is activated at the level of how much we will submit to his authority and to him. You've got to submit yourself, humble yourself before God. And what? And he will lift you up in due time. Humble yourself, he'll lift you up. That's God's way of advancement in his kingdom. It does not take much discernment to see that culture and society are deteriorating around us and not strengthening in almost every dimension. What I found out is because God's not the center of all of our lives. I worked for five years in the job my sister had, Dylan's Grocery Store. She got, helped me get the job because she worked real hard. And they liked what she did so much. And when she was gone, she referred me to Dylan's Grocery Store. And they hired me because of her. So she's been a great uh, John the Baptist for me. <laughs> Dana the Baptist. Even though she's Pentecostal spirit filled. And um, I got the job. And the boss that's there, it was really a kind of a real type A hard nose type guy that was kind of like the rock to me. I mean, he was stern. He had no trouble come confronting people. He was a man's man. He was a self-made man. He did a song very well. I did it my way, I'm sure. And uh, I got saved. I got my fill of spirit. By, like I said, about two years into my stint there at the, at the job, he saw me change. He saw the change in my face and my life. And in the break room one day, he's sitting there, the same break room I'm in. There's about three other folks around us. And he just, for some reason, blurts out, this shocked me to death. He goes, I don't need God. I'm my own God. And I can tell he was saying that to test me on, because something's different about you. There's something that's really changed for the better in your life. And I'm really puzzled. What is happening in your life that is so great that you're looking like this and acting like this? So he just kind of tested me, kind of pushing buttons. And I can't remember the exact words I said back to him. But it was something like, again, something like, all I know is my life is a whole lot better because God is in control of my life. Years go by, I leave the job, he doesn't get saved, doesn't come to get, become a Christian, but then after we leave the job and I'm gone for a year, Cheryl and I are married, we come back to the place to say hello to him, and he said, would you please pray for me? My wife is dying of cancer, and I need help. And all of a sudden, you're, I realize, people can may think they've got it all together, they don't need God, they're big enough, they've got the education, their brain's good, they've got money in the bank, they've got 401k, and health is pretty good right now. But you don't realize you've got a wife and kids, and they got, you've got things all around you that can just fall apart in one week. And what are you going to do in the supernatural realm to make that get rectified in your strength and your might? And so we prayed for him, we prayed for his wife, and his wife ended up dying later on. But as I know is, somehow, some way, whatever God did in my life, she saw it. And he, it touched him. And he started thinking God things. And he started humbling himself. He was a very humble, very down-to-earth man at that time. Pray for my wife, please. She's dying of cancer. Big, hard man. Let's read Daniel chapter 4, verse 25. It says, they shall drive you from men. Because Nebuchadnezzar is here where he's a guy that got that dream and gave it to Daniel, gave it, and interprets that and says, you owe Nebuchadnezzar, you are the head of gold because you rule over all the world and there's none as powerful as you are. You're the great king over all this earth. It went to his head. Nebuchadnezzar um, got humbled by God because he would not acknowledge God. He built a statue unto himself and he said, I am the great commander. Basically, he was saying, I don't need God. I am God. He saw himself as God. He said, bow down now to my image, my statue. And all of a sudden it says here in Daniel chapter 4 verse 25, they shall now drive you from men. Your dwelling place shall now be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They give them a vegan. <laughs> Let's just sink in for a while. They shall witch you with the dew of heaven. Seven times, seven years will pass by over you till you finally know the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses to give it to. And inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump and the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured back to you after you come to know that heaven rules and not you. Amen. Sir, there's a God, but you're not God. Praise God, you're not God. That he's God. 
I say every day, thank you, God, you're God. Amen. So Nebuchadnezzar ignored the warning of Daniel chapter uh, 12. And the devil gave him in 12 months of the day, he lived like this, and then God shows up again. Heals him, restores him, he humbles himself, he prays, gets his heart right with God. Daniel chapter 4, verse 34 is a good prayer to prayer. A good prayer to pray if you ever backslide or get away from God or see yourself as more high than you should. It says, at the end of the seven years, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven. And my understanding returned back to me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praise and honored him who lives forever. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of Heaven, all of whose works are truth, and his ways are justice. And those who work or walk in pride, he is able to put them down. Prophetically in America, I've heard time and time again by true prophets, this is the year of retribution. The year of exposing things that have been done in our government and our nation to try to uh, fool people and lie to people. You're going to start th seeing things coming to light. And I'm praying that prayer every day. God, bring every dark thing to light Amen. in this nation in Jesus' name. Please, every lie, every deception, every twist, please, please. bring it to light in Jesus' name and raise up truth and raise up righteousness. And may your desires and your will be accomplished in this nation once again. Amen. I'm going to close here in a moment myself right now in prayer. But I want to say to right now in closing, there's four kinds of people here today that I want to pray for briefly, and then I'm going to turn it back over to, to a video being shown. The first kind of person here is those who have already made Jesus Christ their king. And that's the majority of those that are sitting here right now. Most of you that are here have made Jesus your king. And God lauds you for that. God says thank you for that because your life is better for it. Amen? It's better for that. There's also those that need to consider beginning a relationship with God. You've never bowed your knee to Jesus and asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior and come inside your heart and take sin from you and be your God and be your Lord and be your Savior. Dana's is the end of one in the front row that told me about the mark of the beast in 1969 and the sky turned that fiery red on the eastern sky there in Wichita, Kansas one afternoon and I went to her and I'm, she's the one she can testify I'm telling the truth. I said, well, Dana, is Jesus coming back now? Looks like Israel's on fire. <laughs> and she says, he may be. <laughs> so I run to the bedroom, get down on my knees, and confess my many, many sins. And just like I was bawling today, I'm bawling more in that bedroom. As Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, comes inside of my life. I could feel, I really didn't feel anything, but I felt something. And I had tears running down my face. And Jesus Christ took sin from me, and he came inside of me, and I was born again. There's those that, aren't, that are watching online and need a, pray, a, a simple prayer. Jesus, I can't save myself. I need a Savior. I ask you to come in my life. Be my God. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I receive you in my life. I want to follow you all the days of my life. I receive you right now this day, Father, in Jesus' name. And God always hears a prayer like that because God sees your heart more than your words even. Amen. It's good to confess. You need to confess, but also believe. Jesus Christ is Lord. And there's no way to heaven, no way to him, except through Jesus, the Son. The third kind of person here today is somebody who just needs to consider more of God in your life. Jesus Christ is your Savior, but he's not your king. There's a piece of pie in your life you've given to Jesus, given to God. That one piece of pie. All the rest belongs to you. Your time, your energy, your efforts, your finances, all is yours. And only one-tenth maybe goes to God. God says it's time to give the whole pie to Jesus, to God. All of it. I give it all to you, Lord. You can do more with my whole pie than I can do in myself. And sometimes God just says things like, just shut your pie hole. And just be quiet and let me be God. And just be quiet and let me show you how good I really am. And God does that. The fourth kind of person, is the kind of person we don't ever want to see in life. This kind of person says, I never, I never intend to make this decision for Jesus Christ as Lord of my life. I pray that if you're like that today, watching online, or you're maybe here today in person, you say, I never intend to give my life to God. I've worked, I've studied, I've bled, sweat, and tears. How can God just take it for free? You don't realize who God is. 
God will only better your life Amen. and complete your life and also Thank save you, you from a place for eternal darkness from him forevermore. That is enough for me to receive Jesus in my life, in my heart. I trust him. God has never failed me, never let me down. He's only done good things in my life. Amen. So praise God. We're going to take and let our next thing take place here where it's going to be a video. And the kids are going to do a song as well. So we'll all come back at the very end and we'll dismiss in prayer. And bless you folks here as they go ahead and give us some more inspiring video here. <clears throat>
everybody. Praise God for that. So we're going to have Greg come back to the front field. My Greg's here in the worship team. It'll be just one more song here to close. Hope you guys have a tremendous Easter time together. I'm going to just also talk to those that are watching online, those here today. We're going to have prayer partners come to the front at the end. They'll be standing up here. If you want someone to pray for you, pray with you about receiving Jesus Christ in your heart, uh, please take time to do that. Your friends and loved ones will wait for you, I'm sure, to do this. If you also need healing in your body, you want to pray for something about finances, relationships, sort of the request or need may be, they're here to pray for things like that also. Maybe somebody needs prayer not here today that you want to see prayed for. You can come up here and pray a prayer of agreement for that person who's not here. God bless you so much for being here, taking this time with us here. And I encourage you again, if you're not a regular person in church, come back and see us again. Come back next Sunday, this Wednesday night at 7. There's a teaching on the authority of the believer. We hope you have a great family time together. God. God was good. Give us no rain, no rain today. The rain's going to come later on tomorrow. Praise God for this. And so it's going to be a beautiful day to be outside. And just having a good time with the family as well. I'm just going to pray one last prayer and turn it over to Greg. Father, I thank you, Lord, that people that are watching online, those who are here today, if they do not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, help them, God, find a place, find a time, even find a place in this sanctuary today to just give their heart to you. Say, Father, I just received you in my life. I praise you, God, that I'm a person who knows I do need a Savior. And I say, draw me, O God, to yourself and be my God and be my Lord. Take sin from me, O God, this day as well. Father, I pray you bless families, O God, strengthen marriages here. Give us family times of memories of laughter, joy, and delight. Heal, God, the brokenhearted. Those that are lonely, God, set them in families. And those, O God, that are in, in confusion and all, I say, bring clarity to their lives. That you really are the way, the truth, and the life. We give praise and thanks, O oh God, this day, this city. We say it belongs to you. Let it be, O oh God, for your glory in Jesus' name. God bless you, Greg. You can lead us in prayer again. All hail Jesus.
just thank you that you are risen. King Jesus is risen from the grave. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory.